Are you looking for the best 3D printers? In this video we will look at some of the best 3D printers on the market. Before we get started with our video. We have included links in the description. So make sure you check those out to see which one is in your budget range. Number 1. Creality Ender 3v3. The Creality Ender 3v3 is an open frame 3D printer, which means it has an exposed printing area that's ideal for basic printing. The alternative closed frame printers offer fully enclosed chambers that provide a controlled environment, which is necessary for mitigating odors, noise, and temperature when handling certain materials that are typically beyond the scope of entry level 3D printing. The Ender 3v3 measures 14 by 14.7 by 19.6 inches, a much smaller footprint than previous Ender printers. And at 17.2 pounds, it's a bit lighter as well, especially compared with competitors like the Anchormake M5C and the Anycubic Cobra 2, two other excellent budget open frame printers. The Ender 3v3 uses a polyetheramide PEI, flexible build plate, like most 3D printers in this price range. Measuring 7.8 by 7.8 by 9.8 inches, the PEI plate magnetically adheres to the base of the printer, which helps heat the print and provides support for adhesion. The plate is mostly maintenance-free, but we did notice some residue left behind from a few printed objects. The Ender 3v3 is not unlike other open-frame 3D printers in its shape or design, but it does sport a handsome metallic finish, which gives it an expensive look. Edges are not sharp right angles, instead, they're subtle curves, and the aluminum alloy in the gantry and base does a great job of preventing any unnecessary wobble or structural integrity issues that plague some lesser budget printers. Number 2. Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus The Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus, $425, can produce exceptionally large prints for a sub-$500 3D printer, and in our extensive testing managed to produce generally very good quality objects with minimal problems. Assembly is required but straightforward. The strengths of the Neptune 4 Plus make it easy to recommend as an editor's choice winning budget 3D printer for hobbyists, as well as an excellent option for beginners who are willing to roll up their sleeves. Just be sure to buy a filament spool or two when you purchase the printer, or buy it as part of a bundle, as the base model doesn't include any filament. Elegoo, founded in 2016 and based in Shenzhen, China, specializes in making inexpensive 3D printers, both filament, FDM, and resin-based, stereolithography, aka SLA, models and accessories, as well as STEM kits. The name is a mashup of EL and Goo, as the company describes on its website, EL it comes from the word electronic, which means open source electronic. GOO comes from the word Google, meaning the 100th power of 10. The written form is one followed by 100 zeros, referring to the huge amount of structural models brought by 3D printers. The Neptune 4 Plus has one of the largest frames of any 3D printer we have reviewed. It measures 25.2 by 21 by 22.8 inches, HWD, and weighs 32 pounds, so you will need to find ample room for it on a table or workbench. Its printing dimensions of 15.2 by 12.6 by 12.6 inches, HWD, are also very large, particularly for a sub-$500 printer. Number 3. Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. The A1 Mini is a bed slinger printer, which means its extruder moves vertically up and down and horizontally from left to right while the print bed stays level but moves to the rear in front. By contrast, a Core XY style printer has a print bed that moves vertically while its extruder moves forward, backward, left, and right. New to 3D printing terminology? Check out our handy explainer. The A1 Mini's extruder can heat up to a maximum of 572 degrees Fahrenheit, allowing a variety of filament types including PLA, PTG, TPU, and PVA. Bamboo Lab does not recommend using ABS or fiber-filled filaments. The print bed can reach a temperature of 176 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little lower than the 212 degrees supported by some other FDM printers. In my tests, the bed temperature defaulted to 140 degrees, and I had no problems with adhesion or object removal. The print bed size is roughly 7 inches square, which is on the smallish side and not ideal if you need to make a lot of larger prints. However, many printers with larger bed areas challenge you to assemble smaller components to create the final product. Instead, the A1 Mini is almost completely assembled out of the box, setup is just a matter of removing a few screws, tightening the build plate, and attaching the holder for single spool use. 
The entire process took me less than 20 minutes. Number 4. Bamboo Lab A1. While Bamboo Lab helped pioneer fused deposition modeling, FDM, multicolor printers, also known as fused filament fabrication, FFF, printers, many of its competitors have recently joined the fray. Bamboo Lab has hinted at a new generation of multicolor FDM printers, but the A1 is well designed and should still be considered a good printer for the price. One thing to be aware of is that the first batch of A1 printers was recalled due to the possibility of a cable shorting and causing a fire. The company offered either a repair and upgrade kit or the ability to return the printer and get a replacement as well as a discount coupon. Since the initial launch, there have been no further major problems reported. As with the A1 Mini, the A1 is a bed slinger style printer, though with two vertical gantries to the A1 Mini's single gantry. With a bed slinger, the extruder moves up and down and from left to right. The print bed stays level but moves to the rear and front. Compare that with a Core XY design, which has the print bed moving vertically while the extruder moves forward and backward and left and right. However, some fairly significant differences separate the A1 Mini and the A1. The first is size. The A1 is physically larger than the A1 Mini to accommodate a 10 by 10 inch print bed, compared with the A1 Mini's approximately 7 by 7 inch bed. The A1 also offers a larger 3.5 inch control panel. I find this much easier to use than the smaller control panel on the A1 Mini. Number 5. Anycubic Photon Mono M7 Max. I remember the meeting with my employer to explain how this unit cost 1 50th the price of professional-grade SLA printers. I showed him how the US Army was using them to print battle-ready antenna mounts for tanks. I implored him to acquire one for our manufacturing facility. I left his office disappointed, but determined to one day join the revolution unfolding around me. Since then, SLA printers have democratized rapid engineering and production. Countless small businesses produce everything from game figurines to functional automotive parts, in many cases, from homes and garages, not dedicated facilities. The Photon gained popularity for its affordability and print quality, significantly contributing to the accessibility of resin 3D printing. Today, Anycubic's SLA resin printers range from the entry-level Mono 4 series to the flagship M7 series, capping off at the M7 Max. Why mince words? This most recent entry is a nearly perfect device for the resin curious and enthusiasts alike, with a build quality that approaches industrial grade, along with exceptional reliability and fine detail. I've absolutely enjoyed testing it. Let's dig in.